Time was when we recorded everything onto DigiBetaCam. DigiBetaCam machines were very good at the time, but they also weighed about 30 kilograms, were about this wide, this long, this deep, and not something you could stuff in your backpack. No. Or take into the field. We're in a new age now. This device represents the new age. Mm. This is the device you can throw into your backpack. This is the Azure Key Pro, uh, a device which has a complement of sockets on the back to connect things to, a minimalist collection of buttons on the front, but it does everything you need to do for a field recorder. And everything you can't do from the buttons on the front um, which isn't a lot. Mostly you can. Uh, there's also a LAN connection on the back. I mean, isn't that the signal of the new there's age? There's even Wi-Fi and you can control it with your iPhone. You can, uh, just like that. Now, you've probably noticed that there's a strange empty slot there on top. That's where the storage media goes. And there are a few different options for storage media. There's mm -hmm. both hard drive and SSD based mm -hmm. media. And you can buy those in a variety of formats and pricing sort of dependent on which media you go for there. Mm, you basically just plug the cassette in. It's exactly the same operationally as loading up the tape. The, the device recognizes it and then off you go. Now, a really good point about that media also is that as soon as you're done with the recording, you can then pop the drive out. You need to follow the correct dismount procedure, obviously. Absolutely. Um, otherwise, you wind up with not a file there. You do. And that's not good. But you dismount the drive, eject it, you plug it straight into your computer, and you can drag the media directly into your final cut yeah, timeline. And, and when Jim says you plug it straight into your computer, literally the, the caddy, and you can see how big the caddy is, just connects to a small external power supply, connects FireWire straight into the into the Mac or the PC, and, and then you're off. So you don't need this to dump the file back out. So no real-time transfers required as well. As far as input options, uh, we've got basically everything from component upwards, so yeah. component, HDMI, and of course, SDI in both standard and high def modes. But analog out if uh, if you want to use that for monitoring. Yeah, which is great if you mm. happen to have a lot of analog monitors lying around. Uh, it's just confidence monitoring. It's, yeah, it's there. it, it mm. shows you what's going on. The down convert's not particularly brilliant, but again, it is just solely it's, for monitoring It's purposes, confidence monitoring. So it's fine. Yeah. Um, you can also put time code in and out, and you've got different options for audio input and yeah, output. Yeah, um, RCA and XLR um, audio options. Now you can you can change where your how much audio headroom you have mm. per se, and that's a really cool feature. Um, you've got little level adjusts. You've got metering. The one thing I'm a little bit reluctant about is the fact that there, there's metering, but there's no numbers next there's to the There's no meters. calibrations. One of the things you really do need to do with any device like this is go and test it on the bench before you take it out and make no assumptions about what it's, it's telling you. So I had a gig where I lined up to the first yellow marker, and everybody I've talked to says, sure, that's what you do. You'd line it up to the yellow marker, so there's my zero VU plus four reference, tons of headroom behind that. Uh, and then um, yeah, we got complaints that the audio levels were low. Mm. Now, Which would lead me to think your headroom control was set very high indeed. Actually, in that case, it wasn't, because that was one of the things I went and checked from oh, the menu. So it was just one of those things. But this is exactly what you find out when you put a device like this on the bench and, and have a bit of a play with it. And you discover some of the other little quirks. When you power this up, it sits there for, oh, I don't know, a minute or two saying 0%. like has this actually frozen, and then it very quickly gets through, bang, it's up, and, and, and it's rock solid just waiting for some media to be plugged in. Mm. And indeed, some sources and uh, someone to press record. Operationally, yeah. uh, it operates a lot like a tape machine, yeah. um, standard sort of transport controls. Uh, and also, as you mentioned, John, you can control it via Ethernet. I've also heard of sure. applications of people controlling it via the 9-pin, mm -hmm. um, triggering playbacks, replays off vision mixes, and so on as yeah, well. Yeah, it's, it's got a standard RS422 9-pin standard Sonic protocol on the back of that. So you, you can uh, use it as a, uh, a playback VTR. Yeah. As a sort of typical disk-based device, if it doesn't see a signal there to record, it won't record. So if it loses signal mm. in its current form, it will stop the record. There's a new firmware version on the way, and that will actually allow you to keep recording even yeah. if it's lost signal. There's a couple of other things you really do need to be uh, very careful of with this. Um, up until this software version, uh, it doesn't chunk. So if you accidentally lose power, because nobody ever loses power on a gig, 
or you anyway. manage to somehow uh, pull the cartridge out without going through the, the correct eject procedure, you're in danger of losing the file. It's not something anybody wants to do. You don't treat one of these uh, as a cavalier box. You put it there and you make sure that it, it, it isn't bumped. Now, provided you do all that, it does behave in a very good and very rugged manner. And every time you press the start button, it'll start recording a new file. It does all the things that you would expect and it's pretty unfussy once you've mm. got used to it. Yeah. Look, overall, I think there's uh, there, there's a lot going for this. You can power it off 12 volts. It comes with a little 12-volt uh, plug pack. Runs yeah. on an XLR, so you can run it off a camera power supply. There's a rail kit, so you can actually mount it underneath your camera and take mm. it out and do field recordings. Look, there's, I, I think, a lot to like about this device. And for the money, um, it's also a lot cheaper than a DigiBeta camera and, ever and, was. And they're hard to go past for the money. They yeah, really are. Really. Yeah, a couple of these. The uh, Azure Keypro.